Hey guys, how are you doing? It's Simon from BizLearn again. Hi and welcome to the second video of this episode, creating a class A surface like this one. In the last video, I showed you how to create this spline and this one here. And now we're gonna proceed with the creation of the other curves and the creation of the surface. And you will see it's a really hard deal to create a real class A surface. Why? Well, first of all, if you have a look at an original picture from, from the vehicle, which even this one is a rendering, so it's not photoreal. There are no reflections of the environment, as you can see. So it's really hard for me personally to find out how these curvature behaves. And you can see there is a kind of inflection in this area, which seems to be really strong. But if you have a look at, for example, these open source pictures, you can see it's not that strong as it seems to be. Stronger in that area, just because this surface is a little bit smaller, but it's not really strong in that area. And you can see all the outlines here, which is, well, you have to have an idea what kind of information this is. It's not your poles. It's not your segmentations of splines or anything like that. It's the isoparameters. And isoparameters are giving us a lot of information about the B surface, especially whether they are trimmed or not. And I told you before that in some cases we need to trim surfaces. If you have a look at this area here, this is a trimmed surface. And in some cases it made sense to think of possibilities without trimming, especially this area. In the video before I said, that we're gonna trim the surface, but I'm not really satisfied with this solution, especially we need to a reconstruction here in that area to gain this inflection. And that's why I'm going to create a real class A surface now. And well, concerning this area, maybe I'm gonna do another video of how to create this solution here because surfaces are always four-sided. And if you think of a mirrored surface, mirrored at this position, you have one side, two, three, four, and five. So it must be some kind of trim within the surface, which is this area. It really helps a lot to have these pictures opened, but you need somehow an understanding of how surfaces are trimmed or a trimmed surface looks like. For me personally, this was a great help to design the vehicle or parts of the vehicle. However, this situation here is something we're gonna consider later, maybe in another video. Or maybe I'm gonna pause this vehicle design because I want to proceed with the magic mouse, of course. However, let's go on with our design. We are here at this position. I'm not gonna delete my things just because of possible comparison reasons. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hide these analysis information and you should control your splines you can see it's a degree of three in here meaning four poles are used for driving the curve and there is no nut so this is something you should always consider have a look on to have one segment splines and especially regarding the surface design later on which is really really complex deal because when we create four sides with splines, it is really hard to reach a perfect surface quality. In my Magic Mouse video, which I'm gonna link on the upper right now, you could see that I was using X-Form instead, because X-Form allows me to work on the shape of the surface, as well as the sides of the shape, and which is much simpler to do, but in that case, it would be really hard to use X-Form. You could maybe, but, well, you could start with X-Form because you have all the degrees of freedom on your first segment. But as you go on with your second segment, it would be impossible by use of X-Form. That's why I show you all of this stuff by use of 3D splines. However, we need some images, so I'm gonna show my images. So I can proceed now and I'm gonna go on with this section here. So. I'm gonna use this view, and if you wonder why I haven't the layout opened, it's just because I want the space on my screen. I have a small screen, and I want all the space being used, so I'm gonna rotate this right. If you have a huge screen, have a look at my last video concerning class A shape design, where I showed how to use a layout to compare different views. However, 
Let's start with a curve with a studio spline and also here I'm going to use bipoles but I'm going to reset before and use bipoles and single segment and I'm going to start in this area here. Create another pole and my end pole here. And I'm just going to move it a little bit and you can see we perfectly match the outline which is really strong as you can see so it's also just approximately however let's have a look at the section here here you can see it's not necessary because i really want the center line to be used and if you draw a spline on a orientated view like this it is always aligning your top view plane that's pretty cool so there's no need to use for example the drawing plane method like this general and specify plane is not required and if it's not required i'm not going to use it however and it's not necessary here to display poles but you can compare to this curve of course this is something i'm really satisfied with so these are nearly planar they don't have to be planar but they shouldn't be orientated like this however so if you have such a situation this will affect the surface in the end so but this one is very satisfying of course now we're able to create a surface by use of surface and through curves it's one and two however we would need a constraint surface as well because of the tangency here but anyway it's not satisfying because this area is defined by the system and there is a little trick you could do but it's still not satisfying i'm gonna extrude this start through curves again select this one and that one and now select my tangent control you can see there is a direct connection between our curves but you now you can define a flow direction for example perpendicular and it's now perpendicular to this one and to this one which is of course pretty cool and in some cases it might be the best solution but not here because as you can see it's not aligning our template so we need to define splines that define the contour and i'm gonna leave the extrude and just keep on designing but i'm just gonna hide it because i want to focus on these curves we need a spline of course i'm gonna start my studio spline and it's by points as well and i'm gonna start here and end here to create tangency now it's pretty easy you have to open the constraint drop down and specify a tangent for the selected point for whether this one or that one and i'm going to use this plane and now we're perpendicular to this plane pretty simple to do but of course also here i'm going to open as analysis show poles and knots we don't have knots but we have too many poles more than necessary if it's two it's perfect because it's two poles here and one pole here means three poles minus two is one segment no knots displayed as you can see so i'm gonna apply this but first of all let me have a look at my template images it's okay it's okay in that perspective the problem is i cannot orient a few because tangency is still enabled if you select points again you can now orient it by right click and drag to the left and this one is okay it could be slightly more curvature here so you could right click this and specify constraint and just increase this value a little bit to match the image but i'm satisfied with it anyway so i'm gonna go to the next one it's this one and that one and also here we need a tangency i'm gonna select specify tangent again and select my plane now it's a little bit more complex because if you have a look at the top view which still is not possible right now because the plane is still selected you have to select points and now i can orientate to my top view and you can see there is a misalignment here in this area which we can of course adjust and therefore i'm going to use my right click specify constraint related to this point and just increase my value a little bit and you can see we're not matching the image uh, well, we're matching it from this perspective, but not from the top view. But also this area needs some adjustments, so I'm going to right click this point and specify a constraint. Now there is something happening, because if I define an angle, for example, there will be an additional point being used. And it's two poles here and two poles here, meaning we got four minus two. Let's have a look at the knots. We have a knot here. So it's four poles, as you can see. I have to increase the degree and it's no more knot 
necessary. So you can define the angle here. And this area is very important because I want it not to be that spiky. You can see there is a spike in this area. So don't make it too close like this. Leave it open a little bit. You can also increase this tangent magnitude value. We're also going to control this view and it's perfect. It's okay as it is. Let's proceed with our surface now and see whether everything is fine. I still got my poles enabled, so I'm absolutely sure that I am using the minimum number of poles. And if you select your splines and enable knots, you can see there are even no knots displayed. If there was a knot, there would a dot being displayed on one of these curves. So let's create a surface now by through curve mesh. And I'm just going to reset this one. Select my first middle mouse button, second middle mouse button twice, third and fourth curve for the cross curves. And we get a nice preview now. And of course, I'm going to show my extrude and define my tangency for my first primary. So you always have to remember which one you've selected first. Yeah, it's this one. It's my first primary. I'm going to select this one and we get a nice preview of the surface. But if you enable analysis now, show poles, you can see there are a lot of poles being used many, many more than required. And it is important for us to use as less poles as possible, especially because we need to redesign this area afterwards. If you have a look at the image, you can see there is a an inflection here. And I don't want to use that many poles because the less poles you are using within a surface, the easier the modification will be. So we have to modify the number of poles, the number of degree into both directions, U and V. Have a look at knots as well. I'm going to disable posts. These are all the knots. So we've created one segment splines and this is what we get. We cannot live with that. It's not class A. So we have to rebuild those and I'm going to use auto fit. I wonder a little bit why an X does not decide to use the minimum number of necessary poles and segments, however, because the number of segments is much higher than required. You can use auto fit and you get a display of the tolerance. So we have one hundredth of a millimeter in use and we have one tenth here. So I have to increase this value a little bit. And now we are close to one hundredth. My target is to find the best mixture of tolerance, abusement and number of segments. It's one segment and nine poles. It's perfect. Let's have a look at cross section. I'm also going to auto fit here and you can see it's seven one and the tolerance here is 800 which is too high so i'm going to increase this a little bit and now it's perfect it's nearly one hundredths of a millimeter that's really really perfect what you gotta do now because if i hit okay now we always get the alert displayed here you can define a custom value for the tolerance and if this custom value is exceeded you will receive a new alert now we're within the tolerance and there's no alert there would be a possibility of using, for example, curve or surface continuity. I prefer this one surface and it's the default. It's multi-phase, just select two phases and you get an information of your continuities. It's position continuity. And here you can see our value. Let's have a look whether it's tangent or not. And you can also see if I disable this one, we have a, an angle between those surfaces of 200 of a degree and that's perfect that's all we need rb curvature continues we're not so of course because we have designed just a tension transition at the end after creating our mirror that's what i'm going to do now we're going to be curvature continuous because the value of a radius on the end position of this edge is equal to the edge this values of the mirrored surface so i'm going to use home more and mirror geometry. And now let's control again. I'm just going to hide these objects. And you can see when having a look at the reflections, even in the shaded mode, there is no gap or something. But don't trust it. Never ever trust your shaded mode. Always use analysis. But first of all, let's have control of our mathematics by using analysis and surface continuity. I'm going to select both. And you can see it's G0 again. That's okay same value also this one is equal nearly and curvature is perfect it's within our range 
and we get a curvature consistent transition here. We also have a very small number of poles being used if I have a look at show poles. Also the knots are still enabled, there's no knot displayed so it's two segments in this case, one mirrored segment and the poles are fine aligned. In some cases you might have a pole somewhere here and everything else is fine so you should control your face curvature in that case because there might be some kind of bumpiness inside. I'm gonna enable this and even here it looks perfect. There is no bump. There is a perfect smooth curvature within our color display and this is what I'm looking for. Of course you have to maybe just move your range a little bit to get a better display however. And let's have a look at the reflections as well. Well, this is a very rough display. I like this a lot because comparing to this image here, it's also very rough. It's not photo real because the environment is not reflected on the car surface. So especially when we do this inflection area here later on, we will have this one in use, it gives us an information of the smoothness of the curvature. However, turn on this one or use the line images because the line images really give us the best information about curvature continuity at this area. And it, the lines which are reflected are, well, they touch each other. So they are G0, meaning there is a point alignment. And they are also tangent, meaning the surface is curvature constant, perfect situation and well this is a class a surface what i call class a well the number of degree could be a little bit less than it actually is and this is something which needs some redefinement of our curves however we do also not perfectly match our images especially when you have a look at this area there's a very very small radius in this area which you might do some hands on but well I wanted to keep this tutorial as simple as possible, so I'm going to leave it as it is. Hope you're satisfied with this and I hope you gain some very satisfying results as well. I showed you everything you need to create this area. Well, there's a lot of knowledge required for the rest of the vehicle. So in my opinion, YouTube is never a replacement for a training. So I recommend you to visit a training, a free for training. There will be no class A training available. So this might be some kind of workshop to do. We do offer such workshops, of course, but we do not create all of these video tutorials concerning class A because this would be a large number of information within YouTube, hard to handle, hard to find things. However, I hope you liked the video and if you have any questions concerning class A, especially this situation, use the comment function. If you liked the video and haven't subscribed it, subscribe this channel. Hope to see you soon. Goodbye.